When dealing with antiques and collectibles, one of the most common questions I get asked every year um, is, how do I pick an auction house? And the situation is typically somebody is in a family, they've inherited something, or their a fr a friend has passed away, and the, and the person who, who, who's gone was a collector, or maybe it was a, a husband and wife team that were collectors, and uh, they're both gone now, and the, the, the time has come to sell the items in the collection, the things that they bought. And picking the right auction house, how do you know? How do you how do you know as a non-dealer, non-professional, which auction house to use? All right. Of course, the easiest thing to do is to go onto Google and uh, throw in, you know, give me the names of five auction houses within 50 miles of my house. All right, and uh, they'll give it to you. And um, the chances of picking the right auction house using that sort of formula is pretty slim. Um, you're going to end up um, uh, sort of uh, most likely regretting the choice because. Google has no idea which are the best auction houses. They just don't know, all right? So you need, you need to make, take some real time, be patient, do some homework, and get an idea of where you want to put the items. And the first place to start, of course, is um, uh, and, and what you need to uh, uh, learn first before you pick an auction house or even start looking for one is what is it you're dealing with? What kind of collection are you dealing with? All right, is it a single item or is it a house full of stuff? Is it a multi-generational collection? Is it a specialized collection? Or is it just regular household objects? And you have to be honest. Is it a coin collection? Is it a stamp collection? Is it sports memorabilia? Is it Chinese porcelain? Is it miniature cars, historic documents, books? Um, these are all specialized areas in addition to just uh, general collections of antiques. And you need to develop a, a true sense and an accurate sense of what it is you're working with. And from that, you can then begin to look at auction houses and how to get the things into the market, all right? And you need to have an idea of value because there are certain auction houses, they won't take things that are below a certain value. So you have to know that, all right? You have, and you have to be honest about it. Um, often when people inherit things, there's a lot of family lore going on about how old something is. Um, you know, uh, uh, one family I remember years ago, um, the, the uncle told me, he said, well, he said, you know, 40 years ago, um, everybody was saying this this particular piece of furniture was made around 1850. And then I got inherited, and the person that inherited it said, well, it was made around 1820. And then another person inherited it, and it was suddenly it was 18th century. Um, that's that's how that's how skewed things can get over time. So you don't want to fall into that trap. You want to have an accurate estimation of, of value, and then separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. You have regular household stuff, regular contents, and then you have antiques. All right. So figure out what those things are. And often um, collectors um, in, or people who've collected, families of collectors, they may have written down somewhere where to sell the things when the time comes, who to talk to and that kind of thing. If you've got that kind of information, you've got a real leg up on the, on the deal. And if you have somebody in your family who's alive that's built up a, a major collection of something, um, show some interest in the collection, find out wh where the stuff came from, ask. Um, don't be afraid to ask. You know, when the time comes, what you know, we, if, if you know, how do we handle this sort of collection? A good collector will want them to know what to do. Um, they'll 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 want their tr their collection treated properly, and they'll answer the question. Do you have an appraisal? You may need to bring in an appraiser, a specialist appraiser, someone who's known for this kind of thing, to give some advice on what the things are worth. If you have an old appraisal that's been done, even if it's outdated by maybe it's maybe it's ten years old or something, at least you'll have basic descriptions and you'll begin to get a sense of what the things are and what their value might be. Um, you can look online sometimes, but you have to know where to look. And there's a lot of there's a lot of bad information on the internet, as we all know. And there are lots of antique websites out there that have you know, pie in the sky, ridiculous prices. And uh, I've lost track of how many times somebody will say, "Well, I saw this on Invaluable, and they're asking ten thousand dollars for it." It's invaluable, and certain sites out there aren't realistic. They're, they're, they are fanciful sites aimed mostly uh, to, to very, very wealthy people using decorators that don't care how much things cost. And uh, they found out later how much they, they how much they overpaid for things. But for right now, they don't really care. So it's 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 not a reliable place to look. But auction results are other auction houses how they've done is a good way to start all right and like i said if you if you know where the where the, where, the, where your collector did a lot of their buying and so forth auction houses you might garner some information from there but in order to get the best 
price for the things when they sell. In the current market, it demands that you have a realistic expectations and a true understanding of what it is you're dealing with. And that's that's really the, uh, the, the, the beginning right there. And once you have that, once you understand all of that, now it becomes a matter of finding an auction house. Which auction house do you want to use? And I would recommend for most people, you, you, you try to build up a list of five. All right, ask for recommendations, like I said, from other collectors, auctioneers. You may have some other written down information. If you have a, 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 a trust department at your local bank or you have a trust lawyer in the family or somebody you know who handles estates and wills, not a general practice attorney necessarily, but somebody who's an estate attorney. There are attorneys, that's all they do. They do estate settlements and so forth. They often work with banks and things like that. And banks and trust departments can be excellent sources for at least getting the names of reputable auction houses in a given area. That's a very, very good source. All right, and, and most of them will be willing to help you. Uh, sometimes they won't recommend specifically an auction house, but they'll give you the names of a number of good ones, sometimes even by category. A large trust department will have a list of auction houses, and they'll have a, a, the, the categories that this auction house has been particularly good at selling in, and, and, and you might be able to get that information. And generally, when you talk to lawyers and trust officers, if you talk to them for a few minutes, they'll, they'll intimate to you in the conversation which one they think is the best, even if they won't come out right and say this is who to use they'll they'll let you know all right and then the next thing you can do is uh, get some verification get some more information L go to the internet and look on the trade papers there are a lot of newspapers and magazines related to the art and collectible world as you probably know and they can provide lots of information um, about about auctions who has had a great auction and when you can read about the auctions and you can find out okay they have a specialist in, in this area and the great papers uh, to look at would be for example the antiques and arts weekly which is which was for many many decades sort of the bible of the um, um, antique auction business uh, the other one that's fabulous is the maine antiques digest it's not just for the state of maine Maine Antiques Digest is the most one of the most widely read monthly newspapers on antiques in the United States. Um, the, the two of them, Antiques Nights Weekly and the Maine Antiques Digest, are very compatible. They, they often overlap in what they cover, but they also sometimes cover things that the other paper doesn't cover. So you want to check them out. They're both very reputable. They're run by, I, I, I've dealt with the people who run both of them over the years. Um, they really love the business and, and it's a good source, okay? Uh, other places to look are the Antiques Gazette over in Europe, um, Art News, and, and so forth, those kinds of places, all right? So once you have a realistic value of what the things are, and now you've got the names of a few auction houses, which auction house is the best one for you? And this, this, is, this is where you really have to boil it down, all right? Which, which one will most successfully fill your needs? So start with those auction houses. Go to the web and go to their websites and take a look. What do you see? Is the site up to date? Is it well laid out? Are the, are the colors and images pleasing? On the site, do they have a list of specialists? Do they have a list of people who work there? Um, the shadier auction houses, for example, often have nothing about the auction house. They just have pictures. They don't have specialists. They don't have departments. They don't have people that you can call to get specific information. It's all sort of just, it's just, a, it's just on the web. It's just an advertisement. You want to look at an auction house that seems to be really into it, really deep, and especially if they have a list of specialists and so forth. All right, and, and many, many auction houses do. All right, and the more specialized, they better, especially in the collectibles market. Um, and then take a look at their past auctions. All right, if they have a website, they can do that. You can have a look at their past auctions, see what the prices have been. How well do they present those auctions? Do they do a really, really good job? Uh, do they get high prices? Do they uh, do they get do well with medium value medium value items? That sort of thing, and the and how do they present it. The presentation of objects on a website by an auctioneer is crucial to the success of it and how long the stuff has been online. So the photos, they should have many photos. If they sell, if you see an item, a listing, look up, look at individual listings. Do they have just one photo or do they provide many photos? If you have an item that has, if you have an auctioneer that tends to show many item photographs, many, many detailed shots and all that, th they are serious about their marketing. They are serious about it, and they and they are not lazy. A lot of the a lot of so, there are many auction houses. They get down to they just put up one picture. That's good enough, and you know let the interested parties email us if they want more pictures. That's no way to do it. You want to have as much information 
on your item posted when the auction goes up is can be provided good well written lengthy descriptions is always good lots of photographs professionally shot that truly flatter the piece look at the images that they've taken in other sales for other auctions do the, do the way they photograph flatter the piece or is it just a static photograph against a white background and not particularly attractive attractive photography is so important in the market today a picture is worth a thousand words and if you have many pictures it's even even better all right the next question is that auction house where do they advertise their auctions how do they promote them in the world of auctions today there are really two primary online live auction sites that every reputable auction house uses and they are live auctioneers and invaluable there are others there's there's uh, auction ninja there's a uh, uh, sales room and all that all those are sort of secondary sites in the market if they use them that's fine but they have to use invaluable and live auctioneers um, uh, live auctioneers is a particularly powerful website for attracting customers um, in North America and Canada the United States invaluable is particularly strong um, in Europe and both of them have lots of interest from Asia so if you're selling a Chinese art collection you get attention from both for me I want to deal with auction houses that advertise on both sites the next question is how far in advance of the auction do they post their sales and for me the is a general rule of thumb three weeks is the absolute minimum of time to be on the internet before the sale date not two weeks not ten days not a week if you have an auction house that puts things on the on the internet a week before a sale or ten days before a sale or two weeks before a sale it's nowhere near enough and the reason is not everybody who collects and deals and, and is involved in the art world the antique and collectible world look every single day for everything they may do it once a week they may do a thorough search once a week and if they miss you the first week maybe they'll catch you on the second week or maybe on the third week all right but if you limit it to just one week and uh, hypothetically let's say you have an auction that's going to take place in 10 days from now and you put the auction online today all right well you have somebody that doesn't look for six or seven or eight days they discover it well they've discovered it now two or three days before the auction and they may just say to themselves I have so many questions I need photographs I need to condition reports I'd like to speak to the auctioneer I'd like to speak to the specialist all that it, it, it's not realistic to expect them to drop everything and cram it all into a uh, uh, you know into, into into the last two days before the sale takes place you want to leave lots of time for research for the collectors you want to leave lots of time for the uh, potential bidders uh, dealers and collectors to contact the auction house to get additional information and so forth because people who do that are the serious buyers the people that ask questions contact the auction house and you can ask our, any auction house this the people that call and ask for additional information smart questions uh, more details condition reports and all that once they do all that they become invested in, in the sale and they're gonna probably be your strongest buyers so you want to let the auctioneer get the stuff into the market for a good long time before the sale so that every potential bidder or you maximize as many potential bidders as you can get is becoming interested in your objects all right and I've seen this with many many auction houses it works out splendidly well for them all right so so three weeks or more 50 or 60 days in advance is even better all right not many of them uh, get to that point where they do it that that far out but uh, that's the optimal um, uh, target I would say uh, to, to put it that way all right and then you want to say uh, um, what's the what, what's the uh, uh, deal with uh, estimates and things like that listen to the auctioneer about his what he does his est his value is his philosophy is on estimates you don't want to set estimates so high you scare people away um, uh, because high estimates indicate high reserves and people that like auctions true auction buyers despise reserves they just hate them all right uh, they don't feel like it's really an auction they might there's many people say well if you're gonna put reserves that high I might as well just go to a dealer and buy it right out of a shop and, um, and and do my business that way so you you, you want to listen to what the auctioneer says when it comes to reserves and estimates and you want them to be realistic and sensible all right the bidders know what the stuff is worth so even if something is estimated at five to seven hundred dollars and, and uh, bidders out there looking at it say what do you mean the last one just like that sold for six thousand um, they're gonna jump on the chance to buy it for five or six hundred dollars because it's got such a low estimate they won't get it for that but it is going to happen but 
it's it's something that you need to pay close attention to things like that and then the the, the last thing you want to ask about is cons- commission rates um, uh, commission rates are uh, usually very competitive when you talk to two or three auction houses they're all going to be within a few points of each other the lowest commission rate may not be your best choice for getting the most money even after paying the slightly higher commission uh, auction houses that maybe charge a little higher commission rate maybe three four five percent higher they may do twice as much marketing because you're paying for marketing when you send things to an auction you're paying the auction house because their motivation is they get a percentage of the sale they get a percentage of, uh, of what the item brings. So the more it brings, the better. And if they, they have a, a very strong um, uh, 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 history of doing great auction promoting, uh, writing good press releases, getting them to the trade paces well in advance of the sale, not the week before, but well in advance, um, they give updates, they have a good mailing list, people they can email, customers they can contact who, who rely on them for letting them know when things come into the market. All of these things are very important. And if the, you have an auction house that you believe is good at doing that, even if it's an extra 5% in commission, pay the 5%, it's worth it. I have never, I've never ever pulled an item from an auction house that I've consigned to because they had a slightly higher commission rate than other auction houses that's never been a concern of mine and it shouldn't be because what you're doing is you're getting somebody who's probably doing a lot more advertising than their competitors a lot more than the five percent that you may end up paying and there are many good auction houses around and i'm going to run through some of them and they'll be listed below here where you can go and look them up and you can go visit their websites and see how they present things. And of course, right off the top, you, the, the three big websites, the three big auction houses in the world today um, that are uh, uh, operating in the United States and in Europe are Sotheby's, Christie's, and Bottoms. Okay, They all do a good job. They all have thousands of employees. They have s- amazing research departments. Um, they have people with backgrounds in art history, antiques, collectibles, you name it. They all have specialists. And um, you're in general in good hands. If, if, you, if, if those auction houses are interested in handling a collection for you, you don't have to worry about too much. You can pretty much just go home and wait for the check. All right, and they will take care of everything. And if you visit Christie's and Sotheby's and Bottoms, you'll see how well they advertise, how well they present things. And they are sort of the gold standard on, on web presence, how a site should look, all right? And there are other websites that are very good, and they're all not necessarily in this order, but there are other great ones that are around. There is uh, Doyle, New York, for example, Doyle Auction House, very reputable, nice people, long-term uh, operation, uh, lots of uh, good staffers, experts, and so forth. Freeman's in Philadelphia is in the same category. Um, they have a v- very good departments. They're in a couple of countries. Um, they handle good estates. They, they, they get good prices. The next one down the list might be Bronx, for example, in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, they are a wonderful company. I've done business with them for years. Those of you that follow the videos know we often talk about Brunk Results. Uh, it's a very professionally run company. They have a beautiful website. They do their homework. They provide very good descriptions and information, photographs. They're excellent. Stair Gallery in New York. Um, another good one, long-standing company. Um, they do beautiful photography. They do beautiful descriptions. And they have a very strong following with the New York collector market in particular, and they get good results. Other auction houses that you might have heard of, and maybe you haven't, um, in, 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 in New Jersey, you have Malay Brothers. Um, they handle great stuff. They seem to really beat the bushes. They push their auctions. They advertise well in advance. Um, Thomaston Place in Maine, run by Kadra Bayou, guy I've known for, I don't know, I've known Kadra for 30 or 40 years. Um, great auction house, great regional auction house, but they have world, world global penetration. People pay attention to what's being sold at Thomaston Place, um, they, they, and they get very good results. When they get major things, they do really well. Um, the other auctioneer in New Hampshire, um, just next door, is um, Devin Moisen Auctioneers. He was the former president of the, of the uh, New Hampshire Antique auctioneers association he was long associated with affiliated with um, when he was running his own auction house with northeast auctions which was run by the famous ronald bourgeau one of the one of the one of the great american auctioneers of the last um 
last hundred years, uh, and he's a terrific guy. Um, then you have uh, uh, so so Devin Moisen's a good choice. John McGinnis in Amesbury, Massachusetts, comes from a family of dealers and auctioneers. Um, he works very hard. He loves to make money, and he loves to make money for his consigners because he, he recognizes that makes him money. And um, they're, they're a, a very uh, a professional company. Uh, the next one up the list is uh, would be Heinemann Auctioneers in Illinois. Leslie Heinemann, um, a well-established auction house. They have a strong presence in the Midwest. And uh, over the years, in the Asian art world, for example, they've come a long way. Um, uh, tw- Twenty years ago, you could twenty or so years ago, you could buy great Chinese things there for nothing, because they didn't have a specialist. And, and over the t- over the last twenty years, they've really built it up. They now have several offices in the United States, and they do a very good job um, with um, their Asian art categories and all their art categories. Another company to, to look at, especially if you like China trade porcelain and good American art, would be Alex Cooper. Uh, for example, um, in Maryland, a uh, very good auctioneer. Pook and Pook and Company in Pennsylvania, long-time auctioneers. They've been around for decades. They're good advertisers. They're professional. They do a really, really good job. And there are others, but you're going to find when you look at when you look at the bulk of the well-established auctioneers in America, they tend to mostly be in the East, with the exception of Leslie Heinemann in Bonhams, which has an office out in San Francisco, which actually used to be the old Butterfield and Butterfield Company, which uh, Bonhams bought many, many, bought 25, 30 years ago, I guess now and but most of the other auction houses that you're going to end up looking at in my opinion the best ones are in the eastern united states starting down in the south in in uh, asheville with, with Bronx. there are other good ones down there too i'm not saying i'm not disparaging other auction houses but Bronx is really the dominant player down in that part of the world and then moving north up into New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, that's where you find the bulk of the, I think, the best auction houses in the United States, uh, mainly because there's so many antiques in these places that uh, um, auction houses are a natural offshoot to dispose of collections over time. All right. So the the deal is, is that you, you, you want to First, get a handle on what it is you're selling, get accurate information about values and estimated values, then start nosing around and get a list of reputable auction houses, then check those auction houses. Do they look like a good fit for you? Do they sell the kinds of things that you're interested in selling and so forth? And then start making some decisions. And you can call them, most of them, you know, uh, 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 Brunks and Doyles and so forth. They have people who, that's all they do is handle inquiries for estate consignments. Chrissy Sotheby's do as well. Uh, and and they'll, they'll work with you. If it's a, if something of interest to them, um, they will be more than happy to come out, have a representative, local representative come and see you. Um, some of these auction houses have uh, representatives scattered around the United States that work for them, for example. Um, uh, so if you're in a certain town, they probably they may have somebody not too far away that they can have swing by and have a look at the items and, and, and give you their thoughts. All right. And, and that's how and then you can make your decision. Then you can make your decision. All right. But that is that is the best formula I can think of to uh, do it. And uh, if you follow that, you can't go too far wrong. And uh, I wish you have the best of luck out there getting uh, getting your things sold. All right. And I'll have a list down below here, as I said, of of the auction houses I just mentioned as a place to start. Okay. Have a great week, and we'll see you uh, later on with more videos. Bye-bye.